Welcome to MapCrow, the RPG art show. My name is Kyle, and today we are talking about how to draw and ink figures in isometric perspective. This show is brought to you by the generous contributions of the lovely backers of the MapCrow Patreon. If you would like to show your support and receive monthly asset packs of digital terrain and minis for your virtual tabletop gaming, head over to patreon.com slash mapcrow and pledge today. In fact, all of the images in today's video are minis for my patrons. And be sure to stay tuned for a special announcement later in the episode. The first thing that I want you to know is that I draw all of my digital minis at twice the scale as my digital terrain. It looks fine next to each other on a virtual tabletop, but this is something I do to make sure that the minis are getting the detail because they need to be able to stand up to a lot more scrutiny than, you know, rocks and houses and stuff. Now, isometric perspective is just like linear perspective in the sense that you start with a box, always start with a box so you understand how much space your figure is going to take up in this skewed perspective. I will then cut this box in half so I know where the halfway point is going to be, where the waist is going to go. So I'll draw a little egg shape for where the waist is going to go, and then I'm going to draw where the feet are going to hit the ground. Now these may wiggle around a little bit as I draw, but it'll give me an indication of where I think things need to end up. The head goes in basically the middle of that uh, top section of the box, and I need to make sure that the shoulders, the waist, wrists and feet are all lining up according to this grid. The shoulder on the left, the wrist on the left, and the foot on the left are all going to be lower than their counterparts on the right half of the figure. We also need to make sure that we see more of the tops of things than the sides of them. So we need to see lots of the top of the shoulder, lots of the top of the foot. And this is going to give us the perspective of looking down at an angle and achieve the orthographic perspective we're going for. If you would like to practice drawing figures in isometric perspective, go ahead and just draw one basic figure completely blank and uh, copy and paste it next to each other, print it out as a blue line, and then just draw your details over it. it. It will really help you understand the perspective a little bit better. If I am drawing a different kind of figure, so something that isn't exactly human shape, I'm coming in with a plan. So just doing a little sketch ahead of time in a non-isometric perspective is going to help me decide what this thing is going to look like so I don't have to kind of make it up as I go along when I'm actually using the grid paper. But I'm still going to be using the boxes and grids to figure out my, my basic proportions. I know things are going to shift around and change as I discover the silhouette and kind of the hunched posture and different poses of these different characters. Nonetheless, I'm still starting off as simply as I can with boxes and slicing those boxes to figure out those proportions. After I've discovered the basic shape, I start adding details, usually with the face, because let's be honest, that's the most fun part. The eyes need to line up according to that grid. They need to not be straight across from one another, but align with the grid. If you can remember this, and it'll be very hard, you'll end up with beautiful figures in the perspective that you want. I find that adding belts or bracers or gloves, boots, straps, all of this, it helps enforce the contours and kind of create this illusion of uh, 3D depth, while also making it easier to distinguish different parts of the body. If you see a belt, oftentimes you're, it's going to make it easier to see where the torso is transitioning into the legs. And if you see a bracer or a glove, it's going to help those hands stand out better. Now, because I am scanning in my pencils and printing them out again as blue lines for me to ink on, uh, I don't really have to worry about keeping these sketches nice looking. I can just kind of allow them to be a mess and draw over things. I don't have to keep them too clean. But if you're using a slightly different process, you might want to be a little bit more neat than what I'm being here. 
You can choose whatever position or rotation that you want on these minis. I like to have them aligning with the grid because it just helps them integrate into the, the, the virtual tabletop a little bit nicer. I also try not to go too elaborate or crazy with my poses because these need to read as game pieces um, as much as they need to be pretty to look at. So yes, we could we could have them screaming and running and doing all these different kinds of things, but that might be a little obnoxious and they won't really look like they belong together as well as game pieces on the virtual tabletop. And now a special announcement for my new podcast. Oh, gosh. Kyle, what's going on? What's wrong? Oh, hi, John. I was just listening to an RPG Topics podcast, and they weren't long-winded or esoteric enough in their definitions of what constitutes low fantasy settings. Kyle, what a silly thing to gosh about. I guess you'll just have to die angry. You're right. We should start our own podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Splatbook, the RPG Topics podcast, where we choose a tabletop RPG design topic and a genre or setting to focus our discussion. We've recorded episodes about the difficulties of running games in Middle-earth, giant monsters in sword and sorcery games, evil cultists in post-apocalyptic settings, spirituality in your D20 F20 game, using backstories in cosmic horror games, and how systems affect superhero games. God only knows what we'll bloviate about next. <laughs> Thanks for listening to that. I'm very excited to start Splatbook with my friend John. There's just a bunch of things that I enjoy talking about with other people and stuff that's not as visually driven as what we do here on Mapcro. So I, I, I just wanted to start a podcast. It seemed like fun. But anyways, back to inking. As always, while you're inking, it's very important to remember what is overlapping what? What is in front? And oftentimes that thing is going to be the head, especially if it has like a big gnarly beak or a long hood or a fancy hat. Probably start there. It's important to step away from your desk every once in a while while you are drawing or zoom out if you're working digitally because you need to make sure that the shapes are communicating clearly from a distance. These are minis after all, and even if they're used on a virtual tabletop, oftentimes you're going to be zoomed out to see the state of the whole battlefield. So make sure that you are exaggerating your shapes into their more simpler and iconic forms. Don't overhatch or over detail because that's just gonna make it harder to see what you're trying to draw. And this is difficult for me because I love to overwork things. I love line work. Uh, but if I know I'm going to be coloring things digitally, I need to step out of my own way and just trust that the colors are going to convey some of the detail and surface that my line work is not. Also, you need to get really comfortable drawing hands and feet in all kinds of crazy directions. Don't worry so much about getting the exact number of digits correct. As long as the shapes are reading, uh, that will do it. If somebody's blowing up your spot and saying like, hey, there's only three fingers on this hand, just like, just like tell them to chill out. <laughs> it's really okay. <laughs> And drawing monsters is a really fun way to just learn more about nature. Like, did you know that moths can lift, uh, like, 40 times their own body weight? That's amazing! Yeah, and also, moths have, like, 200 different words for the phases of the moon? Yes. I have heard these names whispered in my dreams in their own tongue. Oh, and did you know that when we die, the moths are in charge of ferrying the souls of dead men to a house in the sky beyond the knowledge of elves? Yeah. <laughs> moths are pretty neat. And you're pretty neat for watching this episode. Thank you so much. But that'll just about do it for today. <sighs> If I get some time, I really want to wrap up that actual play of the uh, first two scenarios for Rangers of Shadow Deep. So fingers crossed that that happens. But until next time, my friends, farewell. <laughs>